it turns out that this painting of Ben was probably the only picture that every anybody ever did of him. But every single uh, when I when I searched for pictures of Ben Franklin, um, all of them were the same same face, the same pose, the same hair, the same collar thing here. Um, so they're all based on this picture, apparently. Hmm. Which I thought was pretty interesting. And this is a really nice portrait. It's a really neat bit. Right. And you'll notice here, let's talk about the, the, the darks and the lights on this. These are moving towards a raw umber brown. When I say raw umber, does everyone know what kind of brown I mean? It's a cool brown as opposed to bird's umber, which is a warm brown. So it, it, it's trending towards green, but it isn't as far as green. A raw umber is actually a shade of yellow, is what yellow looks like when it gets really dark. So here's some, some warmer spots here. Um, Joelle? Yeah. yeah. The one that's doing the husband, right? Yeah. Yeah, see, see how this, the shadow has some cools in it, but it's also got some warms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and there's little bits of blue and green, but they're not very high contrast. Interestingly, the shadows are warmer than the highlights. And that's very, that's almost always the case. The highlights here are pale grays and lavenders, right? I often use a, a pale pearly gray for the, for the, the top notes on the thing. And around this this zone here, um, faces are usually like three zones. There's this zone, and then there's this zone. There's like if you divide it into the top third and then the middle third from the eyebrows down to the lips, kind of the middle third and then below there. So this third here is the one that has most of the color. That's where you get the 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 eye colors and the the you know the reds around the eyes and the rosy cheeks and the red noses and all of that and this part here tends to be cooler this is cooler and sometimes towards yellowish and this one is cooler and there's that greenish color again that greenish brown and this in a few places where it actually goes to green uh, and that's more common on men women don't and that's because of their beards because most beards, are, you know, always are making some presence known, and it just adds that that brownish color to everything. Look at that interesting now. Okay, so when I tried to, uh, I wanted to make this this um, collage of different ones, and when I when I tried to load this one in to Photoshop, it kept saying Photoshop does not. Um, help counterfeiters. That wasn't, help wasn't the word. It was basically, we're not gonna load that in because that's, that's from money. And I, I couldn't get it to load in because I kept saying, um, we're not gonna help counterfeiters. <laughs> so what I, what I had to do is I, I loaded it into, on my iPad, I could load it into a paint program and I drew those lines on it. So it was pretty clear that I wasn't, you know, so that it wasn't, a direct photograph of the money. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, <laughs> that Photoshop could tell. And I also, I loaded both of this in because I wanted to show the difference of the value of the skin tones. See, this one is much darker than this one. Um, and I, this one is probably quite more from, from the old money because it's got a kind of a greenish look. And if, if somebody brought me this picture versus this picture, the skin tone would be, I would come up with a different skin tone. I don't really worry so much about the skin tones being exactly what the photograph is because skin tones change uh, depending on the lighting. If it's daylight, it's, you know, if it's outside, if it's inside, if it's in the shade, if it's in fluorescent light, if it's in, low light situations, um, it, it all changes the skin tones. If it's summertime versus winter time, they'll quite different skin tones. Um, so this is, I, I think I like this one better because you can see the model. Yeah, this looks sort of more dimensional. Um, 
Okay, comments, questions about that? Now let's go over to Lincoln. And Lincoln, there's, there's a number of different pictures of Lincoln. Of course, he was, he was alive when there was photography, so there are actual photographs. So, so those are two that I like. I think I like this one better, but he's, he's a lot more interesting because of that pattern of well, the beards. And look at how deep those shadows are there. So those are my, those are your two options. And um, I have a number of different ways I could do this. So here's a George I did a couple of years back. And this was a lecture and that's kind of what I'm gonna talk about today, about the value using the um, five shades of gray, four, five, white, black, and four shades of gray to do, to do uh, the skin. And it's all, this is all a value one. And here's um, a light and, this one I have, looks like seven shades that I had to work with here, from the lightest to the darkest, all in the same color family. This is this is like a closer to skin tone, and these are probably the colors I would use in skin tone. This reddish brown, gray, reddish brown color is the color that I use. It's a, a new pastel color, and it's usually the the one I use to block it in with. Um, Because again, the, the blocking it in, usually you're dealing with the edges of the shapes and um, you want something that you don't have to fight. So that, that's like a, a, a Caucasian skin tone and here's a darker skin tone. Light and dark to the darkest brown and then four shape values in between. Here we have the one that's more sallow. Um, this is more towards yellow and this is more towards the red. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, and then this one is just a nonsense color, the lightest and the darkest, and I've got six shades there, and each of them I have at least six shades, six values, I should say, six values, and then here's um, another one that was pretty straightforward, skin tone, so um, I was thinking, well, let me show you the, the, the two other options three other options. We could do um, a nonsense color in full saturation. Wow. See, here's where, where the lighter colors have to be either towards uh, yellow, because that's the lightest color we have, and the darks are towards the, the cyans, because that's the darkest color we have. And then in between would be the greens and the purples and the oranges. Now I see I've got some pale greens in here, and I think that works well. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot, lot of fun to do. Okay. So there's one option, high, high saturation. Um, this is the scribble. This is the scribble um, option. I don't, I don't think this is, for this lecture, this is probably not a good choice, but scribble up portraits are a lot more fun to do. Um, that's my son, Andy, when he was about 16 and his hair was just bananas. And then there's, um, and that's my green Alice. Yes. That's my daughter. And that's all in shades of gray. Now you'll notice even, even on this one, um, I, I cheated and I put a little bit of rosy cheek pink, just enough so she doesn't look really sick. <laughs> and some bits of yellow, warmer, warmer golds here and there, but mostly um, it's the, the values of green. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. So I think you should, I think that um, Ben, Ben would be good in all greens or, or the, the, the um, high saturation. Um, I think, actually, Lincoln, I'm not sure there's enough, yeah, we, well, any, any, anyway, um, we have to decide whether we want to do, a, I, I was thinking of doing a three color one, green, and an orange and a purple um, zones and, and talk about the values via this route or um, doing a green one or a high saturation one, nonsense colors. Or just uh, nonsense colors. Well, we can do a, a nonsense colors like that, all different colors. 
If you do, yeah, I, if you do bed in green, that would really be like counterfeiting. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I like the high saturation. Yeah, me too. I like that. Okay, high saturation. Yeah, me too. All right. So then, um, can we do Lincoln, or we set Lincoln. on on Ben? On Ben. No, I think Lincoln would be really good in high. In so high. do I. Yeah. Okay. So Lincoln in high full saturation colors. So now we're going to look at this palette, this uh, color chart, which has the values and the hues. And uh, within each one of those squares is a saturation. So in looking at the full saturation colors, um, value nine has only one full saturation color. That's yellow. Value eight has um, kind of a yellow orange and a yellow green. So it has two full saturation colors. Value seven has this orange and this green is a full, is a full saturation color. Maybe that. I don't think so. I don't know that one has to be. So there's there's a couple of full saturation greens. See this one, this one has more yellow in it. And six we have that orange, that orange, and that green. Five we have that red and that green. That's not a full saturation cyan, but it looks it to our eyes because it's so bright. Value four we have um, magenta and a darker red and value three. Um, now we're going to get like over here. Like the, this green is, is probably as saturated as we can get. This purple, this isn't the full saturation purple. All of these are down. These three values down here has just those blues and purples are, are that dark. And you'll notice that the the uh, full saturation colors make a sort of a mountain here that goes up that way and then works its way down here. Now these, these full saturation colors down here, the cyan and the blue purple and the purple are so dark that we can't really see them as colors. So we tend to think of like this belt, this, this bunch as being full saturation. And um, I, will, I will use some of all, all of these for the darkest and these for the next ones up. Any questions or comments about that? Well, this morning, first of all, I want to, I picked out a selection of new pastels. Let's see if I can hold them up without spilling them. These, these are the colors that I tend to use the most often. And you can see they're all very subdued colors. And there's the grayscale over on the left. And then on the right, uh, and there's the browns and the skin tones and so on. So I'm gonna use some of those grayscales on this project. And I also picked out some full saturation colors. And those I'm going to use. Wow. Right? Isn't that pretty? What kind are those? They're all different kinds. Some, the big fat ones are the Mount Visions, of course. There's a couple of Sennelliers. Those Sennelliers are really good for those really yeah. bright colors. Um, there's a couple of old Grumbachers back there. And then, because I, I always see there isn't a good magenta there's th that one's not too bad um and there isn't a good orange that's kind of subdued orange so yeah um, when i was when i was indulging in all that ebay buying of pastels i got a set of unisons that uh, unison is a british thing and they made that set in in an extra large set look at that wow they're hmm. huge and look at that red look at that orange that's wow. a good yellow so I'm going to use that. I'm going to. I, I haven't even used any of them. So I'm going to use the orange and the yellow in, in this piece. Nancy, how do you tell when the color is full saturation? Like on the color chart, how could you tell which ones were full well, saturation? The one that looks brightest to you. Okay. I mean, you could, your eye should be able to tell the difference um, between a fully saturated. Orange and one that's here, that one's that's not quite as saturated, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I it's kind of a visual thing. Okay. Nancy, and, were those two sticks the same value though? Um, pretty close. Hang on. Where where did I put that one that I just sent down there? <laughs> Yeah, 
I'd, I'd say so. Okay. I just wondered. Well, squint. Yeah. You squint at him, right? Yep. You squint. got it. Squinting is our friend. Oh, and I'm very excited about using those. I, I mentioned that the yellow unison was the best yellow that I found. Okay, I'm going to start by, you remember looking at that um, fractured up George and each of the color ranges had uh, five or six values. And I'm going to start with a grayscale value. And I'm going to just, there's white. There's my lightest gray. This is, these are all new. The new pastels, they have, they used to sell a set of 12 grays, um, five cools and I mean, six cools and six uh, warms. And I don't think they sell that set anymore. If you have, if you have that big new pastel set though, you'll have at least eight of them cool and warm. So there's working, working my way down the, the gray scale. That's kind of a big jump there. Ooh, that's definitely a big jump. There's, I should have something in between there. I'll just make one by mixing those two. and then black. So that's white, black, and five shades in between, five values. And so there won't be any colors that are as light as white and no colors that are as dark as black. But using, using this gorgeous set of colors here, <laughs> I'm going to, okay, so there's, Yellow, oops, sorry, yellow. Now I have to lighten that to, to keep this honest. <laughs> and I'm gonna try out this color. Ooh, it sounds kind of hard, doesn't it? Okay, and then, um, Going a shade darker, there's an orange. Now, now you should be able to tell by squinting whether or not those are about right. And some of these aren't gonna be precise. So there was an orange and a, but yellow green is sort of in between. This is a hard one, you can, you can probably hear the difference. And then there's a darker green. I'm gonna kind of work my way down the, the greens here for a bit. And I have one that's kind of in between there. That is color, yeah. So there's a new pastel one that's about the same color as this big Mount Vision. And then, That's, that's not full saturation, but it looks like full saturation to us. Yeah. Then, Nancy, you got to watch your shoulder because it's focusing on you and not the paper. Keep telling me, Chris, because um, I'm working way over on this side. What I should do is move my paper over. But let me do that now. Well, it, it's, it looks good if you can. Mm, yeah, but I don't want my shoulder to be in the, the recording. So this blue is, is sort of more on in this value, right? This is lighter than that. And then there's, that one's even darker. And darker. I should have made these longer. And purple. And then down here is that uh, stick of, Cyan um, new pastel. So there's our there's our good darkest dark. 
And let's see, going the other direction. Ooh, that's a Sennelier for sure. This would be cadmium red light and this would be cadmium red, right? And I found a, I found a magenta. And here's a, a magenta with cyan in it and one that's a little bit darker. Well, that's better than that one. Okay, so there's our, there's what we have to work with. Okay, so there's, now which, do you think we should do the three quarter or the straight on one? I think the three quarter. I think okay. three quarters too, you can see more details in that. Yeah. yeah. Especially in the eyes. So I think, um, and I picked out green cause I thought that would be an appropriate color for the background, but it's a darkish green. That's a, um, a Canson color, right? I like to use that color a lot of times on um, animals and sometimes on, on landscapes. So I think I'm going to use my cyan color. So So Where is my paper? Oh. Um, Jan, would you mute your um Mike? Would you would you mute uh, would you yeah. mute yourself there? Okay, I'm sorry. Thanks. I think probably I'll need to bring him farther over this way. So I'm I'm trying to pick up the, the, the angles. Let's see his his eyes are there. And nose. See, rather than trying to pin down where the eyelid is and, and all of those things, I'm, I'm, I want to work with just the darks and lights first. He's so distinctive. I like working with these presidents because they are so distinctive and, and um, they can, you can catch, catch their lightness pretty quickly. Um, Cause everyone's familiar with that pattern of light and dark. And I'm using a very light touch. This is a, a this is a fairly hard pastel, so you can hear it. Let's see. Now, see how the 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 top of the ear lines up with the top of the eyebrow.
Nancy. Yep. I'm sorry if you already um, said why you chose that particular color to you know, do your initial sketch with. Okay, the, the reason why I chose this particular color is because this paper is already pretty dark. The paper is, is, is like this value. And there, there are not very many colors that I have that are darker. And right. um, okay. yeah. his sense. darks are very dark. So um, I think I will appreciate having, um, okay, the bottom, of, come back here, go again. See what it does. Lost his left side there. If I touch it, it wants to go. Okay. So the bottom of his ear is kind of lines up with the bottom of his nose. See how I'm using those those uh, benchmarks to to define the shape, to find the shape. Is his nose a little too straight? Um, I think it's a little too short at the moment. Oh. So this needs to go up a little higher. Did that do it, Sheila? Uh, I had my mute on. Um, can't see it now, your hands are like, yeah, that helps. And I like the way his hair curled around his ears. Let's see that ear needs to come in a bit. Now, um, This part needs to be higher as well. Once again, I'm grateful that I used a full-size sheet of paper. And this is very typical of me. I'll start a certain size and then it kind of grows. It's good to know your, your biases. When I first started doing portraits many years ago, um, for the longest time, I was making this distance here 
too long. And everyone came out looking kind of horse faced. And then, so I consciously tried to counter that. And then for a while, they were all too short. So there's a, there's a situation. Um, one of the things for getting accuracy is to check your negative spaces. And in portraits, there's not that many negative spaces. Uh, but this one here is always very handy. You can, you can see this, that kind of, that de defines the, the shoulder and the neck. See where the, the collar comes out and where the where it goes into the side of his chin. Okay, so there's my first first uh, draft of um the main shapes and angles. Okay, the our left, the eyebrow is too pointed, although his eyebrow is quite pointed. Um, it needs to come up a bit, Let's go down a bit. Nancy, it looks like you have a V in the beard right underneath the um, lips. Right yeah, there. good catch. Yep, good catch. And his is almost straight across. I mean, using a, a green um, that's to carve to eliminate some of the, the, the darks that are not quite right. Yeah, he's very he's very lopsided. Notice the um, the direction of the fulcrum here goes off this way. His 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 whole lower jaw is is off that way. That way. Do you do you all have this picture up in front of you so that you can see? We see what you're holding. Yeah, I I printed it. <laughs> So most people are lops, you know, their jaws do go when mine goes about a quarter, is about a quarter of an inch off. Um, which is one of the reasons why I look so weird in photographs and, and, and when I see it in the, um, the recording. Because um, it's, it's not only off, but it's off in the other direction. So it looks like twice as far 
twice as far off as it, uh, I think it should be. This needs to be longer. Nancy, did you um, choose the green for corrections because of the background paper color? Or? Yes. Okay. Yes, I did because right right now I'm still I'm still trying to get the drawing part right. Let me lower the, the paper so you can see it better. Um, and the green is going to um, is going to draw the least attention. How's that? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Also, I like that color that it makes when it mixes with the blue. <laughs> so his eyes are a little bit slanted that way and his eyebrows even more so. Let me put that back and lower this eye. Oh, it's fun to have all these pretty colors. People are so boring in their coloring generally. Okay, I want to get some lighter areas in. Um, next. So get all the all the players in shape. Okay, so for his forehead, which is quite pale, um, I think that's a place to use yellow green. Boy, that soft. This is one that I made and it's, it's still kind of rough around the edges. Some yellow. And you, you can see how I'm using the lighter colors to carve away the darker colors to, to refine the edges, I should say. Put some orange in there. So this is, these are, are like value, what would that be, six maybe? And, the, and all of these values have yellow, lots of yellow. Everything from here, here up has lots of yellow. So th I, those are the colors that I need to work with um, for all the light areas. And I'm starting with this value because I can add those lighter colors to lighten them up. Now I have to be careful overlapping these because the greens have cyan in them and the oranges have magenta in them. And if they mix, then they desaturate each other. It looks like Mr. Spock. Go back to the green there, I think.
Nancy, do you have to guess at the values? Because I don't see too many in the picture. I don't see much value change in his uh, in his face. Not yeah. There's not a lot. The, all of the light areas are kind of washed out. Right. This picture has you know you can see a little bit more of the modeling, uh -huh. but not much. Yeah. I um and I'm pretty much using all the same values. Just some of them are mm -hmm. um, orange and some of them are green. Now I could cheat a little bit and use things that look high saturation, but aren't like bright pinks and bright blues, light blues. So you'll notice that I never I'm not just, I'm not getting the drawing real careful and then filling in the colors. Um, every stroke I look again to make sure that the shape is, is more accurate than whatever was there before under it. I'm gonna put a little bit of red there. Sometimes when it's a new pastel, did you see how that came out in lines? <laughs> you have to use it a little bit to, to get the rough, the rough edges. Okay, I think this shadow here is, is I'm gonna make that blue. Gotta get that blue in. I think some of this. It's a lighter blue. to my lighter. Use that color. Now we're moving into a lower value and a, more towards the um, magenta color. What have I got? The, so the darkest color I have is this is this um, cyan color. I'm gonna get that. And then pushing hard, you can probably hear it um, to get. I'm sorry, I have to I'll stop holding that for a minute. It's 
pretty heavy. Okay, how about that? I'm getting resistance from technology again. Let's see if we can refine the, the eyes a little bit now. Let's see, what background could I use? I think it needs to be a fairly dark one. You can see how this this light makes him sigh. A very specific kind of shape. Pretty sharp along the edges, and then it kind of dives in a little bit. orange. So at this point, there's quite a lot of pastel on there. And did you see how I modified that little color there using a, a hatching stroke like that? And a light touch, that's a really good way to modify. Um, if you just need the, the, the value to be a little lighter or a little darker. I'm going to give his forehead some more middle tone. Why did I keep doing that? And we, we were talking about doing 
um, wrinkles. And you have to get the, the dark tones in first. So got some dark tones in, darker tones. Might try a little, see how we feel about a little, a little white in there. I think we can get away with that, don't you? Now, does that look like he has wrinkles in his forehead? Yeah, it does. Yeah, okay. Yeah, see, so that, that it wasn't a lot darker. It was just one value, one or two values darker. But you, but you want to actually draw the highlight sides parts. And that, that one's a little strong, so I'm just going to. And up one more, what have I got that's lighter enough? Mm. Oh, there's a good green one. Where's that one been? If I, if I leave the stuff I'm not sure about, a little light, then I can, you can see how, as I make adjustments and I change things, as I start focusing in on that particular area. I, I'm gonna have to give it light of you. I don't like the green in my hair. Is this lighter? Maybe that. Oh, we're almost out of time. Let me um, let me just work on this eye and see if we can get it a little more in place. Go a little bit lighter. Yeah. I might be tempted to um, go to black and white here, or at least a pale gray. But let's see how far we can get with.
Mm. Blue eyes. Probably didn't have blue eyes. See, this one hasn't worn down to a point very well, so I, I'm turning it to find a little corner where it's been broken off of it's still pointed. There's one right there. Now you can actually sharpen these, just take some sandpaper and, and rub on or, or use a exacto knife, but I, I don't know, I'm never that patient. Get some. Would you like to continue this next week? We're almost out of time. I would love to. Okay. Yeah, sure. I, I think it's very interesting to see how you use the colors, the lights and darks. Well, this is, this is a really good example of why the color doesn't really matter. It's only the value that matters. Yeah. And this, this is the proof of it. Mm -hmm. if, you were, rather... if, if you were doing this, you know, in natural colors, would you still be using that many different uh, values of yeah. oh yes absolutely tell you what next week i'll do a natural color row here to match the values mm -hmm. and so you can see that okay